What's going on guys, it's your boy TMI and the Mass Investor. Several of you guys have been asking me a question about what my what are my thoughts on the interview that happened just recently with the CEO of Mullen, Wes Christian, and of course our guy from Fox News, Charles Payne. So what I'm gonna do is go through the interview with you guys. I didn't like at the end of the interview how when there were some pressing questions being asked, it seemed like things started to break up. I don't know if the CEO is just trying to avoid those questions or if Fox is just trying to cut him off, but something didn't quite seem right. It seemed like a lot of the, you know, the softball questions were easy. And then when it started getting a little bit tough, there seemed to be some issues. So make sure you guys watch at least this video to the end so you guys get to see exactly what I'm talking about. If you guys haven't yet, of course, smash the like button, engage the video. Here we go. In fact, Mullen Automotive Chairman, CEO David Mystery, along with uh, Christian Atter, a law managing partner, Wes Christian, uh, uh, who's been on our show before. And David, uh, thanks for joining the show. For folks who aren't familiar with it and say, well, why would we be talking about a 60 cent stock? I do want to point out your average daily volume is 274 million, 274 million shares a day. <laughs> You've got quite a huge uh, following of, of retail investors who have fallen in love with your stock. Many of them are disappointed. I want to talk to you about a series. If anybody out there is currently in Mullen or has been in Mullen before, put a quick one in the comment section below. And let's just see if there are still Mullen retail investors, of course, out in the market. But uh, let's keep going. The things, but let's begin first and foremost with this lawsuit that you have against these brokerage firms. What are you alleging here? Well, we've sent a loud and uh, clear message uh, to the world that we're not going to stand by and allow illegal short selling uh, of our stock and hopefully we can be the change that uh, th you know makes things uh, different here and gets people to pay attention to what's going on uh, with specifically with Mullen and all the other uh, companies out there that have to deal with this on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, Wes Christian, uh, who is quarterbacking this uh, entire lawsuit, could uh, elaborate Right. as to the merits of, of the lawsuit. Wes, without, without uh, adjudicating it, the whole thing here, uh, of course, I know that you've helped the, these sort of situations before. Uh, are you alleging that, that these firms are doing it or that they're just simply allowing it to happen? No, Charles. Well, first, Charles, thank you for having me back again, buddy. We appreciate it. I know this is a passionate subject for you, too. Uh, what, what we're alleging, simple version, is the defendants in this case uh, illegally violated Rule 15C33, which is the customer protection rule, as well as uh, Rule 14B1, both of which stem out of them either short selling shares Ill illegally by not having a proper borrow. Why? Because they were using customers' accounts, mm -hmm. which violates Rule 15C33. That is interesting. Write that one down. Keep that one back in mind. Let's keep going. Or, and in doing so, uh, and, and knowing that there's going to be shares coming and these conversions that happened. Right. And then those conversions happen, they use those shares to repay their customers' account shares. Or similarly, they illegally lent those shares to someone else that did short selling. What we do know, Charles, just, just to give you some basic optics, 65 million shares failed to deliver in June of 2023. We have verified from the, the brokers, the defendants in this case, Charles, own records that they sent to Broadridge that they had 19 million to 54 million shares of imbalances. Right. What that means is they reported more shares in the, in, that they had beneficially owned than they had at the DTC. That's what we call imbalances. Right. right. Okay. Once those are ongoing and systemic, then it, it's, it's signs of illegal short selling. All right. Uh, by the way, we reached out to all of these firms. Schwab got back to us. I'll read their statement. This lawsuit spends an outlandish conspiracy theory that blames Schwab for the performance of Mellon stock. But the complaint is long on salacious allegations and short on truth. The truth is that Schwab always acted professionally, legally and ethically, ethically uh, in this manner. Now, of course, that is the response coming from an institution. I don't know what anyone would expect the response coming from an institution to look like, but that would probably be it. Whether or not they're telling the truth, I, I don't know. But it seems to be such a huge device, specifically with this Mullen stock, regards to, in regards to what institutions think they're doing it and, and, and how legal that is, and what these two are going on to carry with the legal with legal action of how much naked short selling is possibly going on i personally do believe there has been some manipulation i do think i think if you're at home playing monopoly with your friends or playing monopoly with your family people cheat i think if you're at home playing a card game people cheat i think if you're playing go-karts with your friends people cheat if people cheat just to win 
at a nothing nothing sum game imagine what people would do on wall street to win for millions and billions of dollars over the long term not off of one single trade but you guys get what i'm saying here right so i do think that there is some sort of manipulation going as to if they can prove it or not in court that is going to be to well, i guess what we're, what we're looking forward to seeing here right let's keep it going uh david let me go back to now to the company uh, a lot of a lot of concerns about your oh this is the part that i'm talking about right now this is the part that i think is very important this is the part that i think is just suspect all over the place here we go salary uh, the losses. I went through the last quarter. One thing that jumped out at me on G, uh, G uh, general and administrative spending, thirty-one million dollars. Uh, just as a business itself, uh, you know, why are you spending thirty-one million on, on SG&A costs? And people are saying you've taken a lot of money. You have paid yourself a lot of money, and, and and this kind of spending, it just doesn't make sense for a small company like yours. Now that is what I call a hard hitting question. You can tell right here that my man, uh, Wes Christian, not really enjoying that question. He, he did call the guy buddy. He called um, Charles Payne buddy. He said, I know you're passionate about this. Thank you very much for having me back. They have someone of a report. This is journalism, in my personal opinion. It's not asking the questions you want to ask, but it's asking the questions that people that are watching the show want the answers to. Here we go. In relation to... Um Let's and you can see here, here are the, here is the spending chart that Charles was speaking to. Of course, they came into this conversation prepared, so they already, had, they already had the graphics up. And now you can see exactly what he's talking about, right? General, general and administrative, $31 million. Research and develop, $22 million. Total operating expenses, $53 million. In 2022, total operating costs, $18 million. So it went up significantly this year in compared to last year and the stock is doing horrible so with a small company like that why is there so much money being spent like this when that's probably you know a huge chunk of the amount of money coming out of the overall bottom line Let's keep going say uh compensation whatever compensation that was um uh, awarded uh me and my employment contract are uh compensation pursuant to awards um were given and um David, can you hear me? This part right here, all right. this. All right, you're, 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 you're fading out, and I've got 20 seconds. One last thing: these stock splits. Okay, I read, th I read your firm. What the firm is saying is that these stock splits were done to uh, stay compliant with Nasdaq, with the Nasdaq listings. But every time you split your stock, it becomes fodder for the short. So, folks, it looks like we're having some audio issues with David. We're running out of time. We'll pick this up again. We want to go over these stock splits, which to me are just nuts. They're nuts. All you're doing is helping the shorts. We'll also talk about the role of dark pools because it's in, it really seems nefarious to me. The end of that interview to me was just a little suspect when the hard-hitting questions finally came. It seemed like things were broken up. So that's either on the end of Fox or that's on the end of the CEO of Mullen just acting like he couldn't hear because he didn't want to answer the questions. But something's up. You guys let me know what you guys have as thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you guys very much for watching. If you guys haven't yet, of course, guys, smash the like button, engage the video, hit the little bell notification so you guys get notified for videos just like this and for anybody out there looking for more information on trading guys we do have a wonderful trading community and we are having a sale right now for the labor day weekend ten dollars for the next six weeks to jump in there and take a look at what we got going on all right until the spots are full or until the end of the day on monday much love guys see you guys in the next video deuces